Armando Hasurugan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. In this video, we're going to talk about cardiac output, how to calculate cardiac output, and what factors influence cardiac output. So cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the heart in one minute. Therefore, cardiac output or CO for short, is measured in milliliters per minute. Cardiac output can be calculated using two variables. The first variable is heart rate, which is the number of heartbeats in one minute. So heart rate, or HR for short, is one variable to calculate cardiac output. The second variable is stroke volume, or SV for short, which is the volume of blood pumped with each ventricle with each beat of the heart. This is measured in milliliters per beat. So cardiac output, therefore, is the product of HR, heart rate, and SV, stroke volume. So let's look at an example now of calculating the cardiac output. Well, the average heart rate is about 75 beats per minute, and the stroke volume is about 70 milliliters per beat cancel the beats out and we can get a cardiac output of 5,250 milliliters per minute, which is about 5 liters per minute. And this is classified as normal. The amount of blood passing through the heart each minute is about 4 to 6 liters. And this is quite amazing for an organ that is the size of our fists. Now back to the heart rate. As we have learned, Heart rate is how many beats per minute? Well, there are factors that can influence the heart rate. There are factors that can positively influence the heart rate, meaning increasing the heart rate. These are called positive chronotropic factors, and these can result in tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate um, over 100 beats per minute. Then on the other side, you have the negative influences. These are the negative chronotropic factors, and they can result in bradycardia, which is the a heart rate below 60 beats per minute. Let's look at some examples of the positive chronotropic factors. Well, the sympathetic nervous system is the main factor because, as we know, the sympathetic nervous system is the fight and flight response and so it would increase heart rate to pump more blood around the body. The sympathetic nervous system secretes adrenaline and noradrenaline, or epinephrine and norepinephrine, to increase heart rate. Then we, have, uh, then we can have hypercapnia, which is increased carbon dioxide, which would increase heart rate. And also a decrease in calcium would increase heart rate. The negative chronotropic factors, the main one is the parasympathetic stimulation, whose main neurotransmitter is uh, our acetylcholine. And then there is hypoxia, which also decreases um, heart rate. Hypercalcemia will decrease heart rate. Now, when dealing with hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia, these usually don't have much of an effect on heart rate. Rather, they have more of a profound effect on the muscles of the heart, and we'll talk about it soon. So from this, we know that cardiac output is calculated by heart rate and stroke volume, and that the heart rate are influenced by positive and negative chronotropic factors. But stroke volume can also be influenced by many other factors. These are preload, afterload, and contractility. And because we know stroke volume um, influences the cardiac output, we can say, therefore, there are four total determinants of cardiac output. The first determinant of cardiac output is heart rate, as we mentioned which is how many beats per minute. 
The other three determinants of cardiac output are factors that influence stroke volume, which in turn affects cardiac output. So one determinant, the second determinant of cardiac output is preload, which is the volume of blood entering the ventricles. Okay, now let's think about this systematically. If we have an increase of blood entering the ventricles of the heart, this would mean that we have more stretch of the ventricles. And this means that there is an increase in preload. And an increase in preload would mean that there is an increase in stroke volume if everything else is normal. Now, just to mention, you all probably have heard of the Frank Starling mechanism. Well, what is it? To put it into super simple terms, the amount of blood entering the ventricles of the heart would mean that it's the amount of blood ejected from the ventricles to the body. So we would say that the end diastolic volume, which is the volume of blood in the ventricles prior to ejection, will be proportional to the stroke volume. If that didn't make sense, don't worry. Just the Frank Stalling mechanism is important though. The third determinant of cardiac output is afterload. So we have had heart rate, preload, and now afterload. What is afterload? Well, it is the resistance the ventricles must overcome to pump blood around the body. This means that if someone has high aortic pressure, the afterload would increase. Because an increase in resistance, which is the aortic pressure, means an increase in afterload. An increase in afterload means a decrease in stroke volume. A decrease in afterload means an increase in stroke volume. And all this will influence cardiac output. The fourth and final determinant of cardiac output is contractility. Now, contractility is to do with the cardiac muscle cells itself, and this is pretty straightforward. Contractility is how hard the myocardium contracts for a given preload. It is basically how hard the heart muscle muscles contract to pump blood out of the heart. An increase in contractility means an increase in cardiac output, and a decrease in contractility means a decrease in cardiac output. It's quite straightforward. Now, there are factors that actually increase and decrease contractility. These are positive ionotropic factors and negative ionotropic factors. Let us concentrate on the positive ionotropes first. Well, the sympathetic stimulation can increase contractility. Caffeine can also do the same. And hypercalcemia, an increase in calcium, because calcium is an essential, is an essential component for muscle contraction. Then we have the negative ionotropes, which are the parasympathetic stimulation, a decrease in calcium, hypocalcemia, and an increase in potassium, and in particular, myo cardial hypoxia, where there is not enough oxygen supplying the heart muscle cells. Myocardial hypoxia will cause a decrease in contractility. Hope that all made sense. So that was a brief uh, look at cardiac output and what influences cardiac output. So there are four determinants of cardiac output, heart rate, preload, afterload, and contractility. So I hope you enjoyed this video on cardiac output. The next video we will look at the cardiac cycle as well as the graph. Thank you.